perfect in your weakness His power shows up in your pain He knows every test and trial you face He'll shelter you from the rain When your back's against the wall And you've given it your own Oh, just hold on Till it won't be long Your struggles will soon Promises. His mercies are new every day. He knows what I need before I even ask. His grace is sufficient when I stray. When you don't understand.
what another amazing day this is. Let me uh, take this privilege to welcome you to worship on today. I believe today God's going to do something remarkable just for you. That's blessing with your name on it. Trust me when I tell you that. Make sure you hit that share button, tag, text, start, watch parties, tweet, everybody you know. Simply yell, call down the hallway, tell them to tune in right now. Um, God's ready to speak into their hearts. We're getting ready to go into praise and worship. And then immediately after that, after God has spoken through us, through the ministry of song, through Sister Bridget Harris, I'm going to be right back here with the word of God just for you. Someone said, if I can't say a word, I can just wave my hands. So come on, if you don't know what to say, wave your hands in the presence of the Lord. And I guarantee you, he'll move in your midst and a praise will come to your heart. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Lord, I feel you near. You're in the atmosphere. Your presence is here. I feel you. Thank you, Lord. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm thirsty. I need more. I need your power, Lord. I need you. I feel you. I feel you moving, move oh Lord in me. I feel you moving, come on lift your hands and feel his presence. I feel you moving, move oh Lord in me. Your presence is here. I feel you. I feel you. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm thirsty, I need more. Thirsty, I need more. I need your power, Lord. I need you. I need you. I feel you moving. I feel you. 
sing so softly to him. I feel you moving. Come on and feel his presence. Feel his presence. I feel you moving. He's moving on your behalf. more time let it ring out from your heart I feel you moving yes we feel you moving I feel you moving move on Lord move on Lord in me in me hallelujah hallelujah glory to you Jesus Praise the Lord, everybody. I want you to get your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhone, whatever it is that you have the Word of God secured on. And I want to call your attention to the Gospel according to Mark chapter number 8. And uh, I want to read into your hearing verses 22 through 25. Here at the beginning of the reading of the Word of God, and he cometh to Bethsaida. They bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught, does he see anything? And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. I want to preach to you from the subject, I'm trying to see something. I'm trying to see something. I had to admit something to myself here just recently that my ego and my sense of invincibility were in denial of. And that is, I had to honestly say to myself that I do not see as well as I once did. Particularly at a distance, depending on the distance, and things appear distorted. Everything looks blurry. The details of the image seems difficult to discern. And I found myself straining to make out what anything was, at least at a distance. Strained vision. Somebody who's watching me now, they can absolutely relate, and they know exactly what it is to have to strain to see something, squinting your eyes, holding them tight, in order to bring into focus that thing that is in your line of sight, particularly when it is at a distance, straining to see unsure of what you're seeing. You cannot make out in detail completely what you're looking at actually is. You may see a figure, you may see a shape, but the details are a little fuzzy and you have strained vision. Do you know what it is to have to strain to see, unsure of what it is that you are looking at. And I found myself straining to see and to bring into view the thing that was in my line of sight. And the reality is I, I, didn't, even, I, I didn't even notice it. Uh, perhaps I did and just could not bring myself to come to terms or to come to grips with the fact that my sight was gradually declining and I don't know if this man in our text lost his sight gradually or was it more abruptly but the reality is he lost his sight and when we run into this man he is accompanied by some friends who decide that they're going to bring him to Jesus so that Jesus can heal him and that he could rectify uh, this inability to see. And it is clear from the text that the Bible says that these men brought him to Jesus because he did not see. They, they were 
they were bothered by his inability to see. And I want to take a moment, and I want to take a moment to thank God for surrounding me by people in my life at various junctures and various increments and various stages in my life who were bothered by my inability to see. Bothered because they can see me, but I could not see myself. Uh, uh, the problem is you have people around you who perhaps may belittle you because of your inability to see yourself better, see yourself greater, see yourself at a more expanded level of living. But God sent people in my life who take a personal issue, have such stock in my progress and my success that they get bothered by my inability to see. Oh my God, I, I want to take a praise break now because the truth of the matter is you got to have people around you who are perhaps even more bothered than you that you're not seeing yourself the way that you should see or the way everybody else is seeing you because the reality of the matter is that the people, his friends who are around him seem to be more bothered by his lack of sight than he actually was himself. And so not only were these people around this man, I find it interesting that they were bothered by his inability to see, but they were so bothered by his inability to see that they start begging Jesus to touch him. You have to be surrounded by people at this juncture in your life who are not satisfied with them being the only person with a vision in possession or a dream uh, in possession. But you got to have people around you that are begging that God opens your eyes so that you could get a full glimpse and a full view of the untapped potential that has been lying way too dormant for way too long on the inside of you and you need people around you that will beg God and say God touch him open up his eyes because life has a way of blinding you to your potential and and you go through one through many bad patches and one through many bad experiences in life and life kind of blinds you from what you're capable of and it blinds you and it will not allow you to consider that despite you being here there is yet more for you to explore yet more for you to experience yet more for you to discover but not only were these men bothered by his inability to see but they were so bothered that it provoked them to beg God to open up his eyes and it is critical because not only were they bothered and not only did they beg Jesus but they understood the necessity in saying bye when they did now this is important to this text because the Bible lets us know that they obviously care for this man a great deal that they have been with him and they brought him unto Jesus and begged him to touch him and then they depart now I want to take a moment and talk to you because a lot of you have been upset with people who have seemingly walked away or have said bye but I want you to understand that sometimes people can only go so far before they will cause you to develop a codependence on them and you'll never get to the place of deliverance some people walked out because you were strung out on what they were doing and they had to leave when they left or else you would never develop your own sense of identity your own sense of independence the bible says that when they brought the man to jesus they had gotten so bothered that they brought him that they begged jesus and they got to the point where they looked at the man and says bye we turn you over to Jesus Lord help me preach because you'll never know what your hand can do as long as you are looking and reaching for other people's you'll never know that you have the ability to stand on your own and you are capable very capable of doing way more than you have even considered up to this point but until some detachments are made until some departures are put in place you remain dependent which will prohibit you from being delivered 
from what it is you're delivered from. And the Bible says they say bye to him. And that is when Jesus takes him by the hand because I want you to understand that sometimes God won't intervene as long as you're entertaining too much company. Oh God, that there, there, there's sometimes that God will not intervene, that he will not jump in the matter as long as you are surrounded and enveloped and engrossed by so many people. But it's not until certain people say bye that now you are in the position for God to do the miraculous in your life. And the Bible says that when they say goodbye to him, he takes the blind man by the hand and he leads him out of town. I would have you to notice, ladies and gentlemen, that this man doesn't appear at all to be resistant. There is no sign of reluctance because what you must understand is that restoration begins when you are not hesitant to being redirected. God, help me preach that. The reason most people can't get miracles is because you want God to do what you want him to do within the confinement of your comfort zone and you don't want to have to move to get it done. But I want you to understand that real restoration begins when you are no longer resistant to being redirected and sometimes God has to redirect you before he gives you the miracle that you have been desiring from him because radical redirection often involves relocation that is important because the bible says that jesus takes a man by the hand he doesn't ask him could he go anywhere or where he would like to go he just takes him by the hand and starts to relocate him i want to talk to somebody and tell you get ready for a swift relocation get ready for god to move at a quicker pace than you anticipated in fact most people have been telling you but you ain't going away anytime soon you might as well settle into where you are but i want to tell you that if you could resist the urge to be resistant to being redirected by god then god says now when i know you're not going to put up the kind of fight you have been putting up the last few months and the last year you know life has a way of breaking the fight out of you in relation to God you can go through one too many times and you say okay God I'm not fighting anymore you're not gonna have any problem out of me before and the Bible says that when the man shows no resistance Jesus grabs him by the hand because the first touch was never about restoration it was to see if he was resistance to guidance because most people want miracles and then they get the miracle and they go back to being a renegade they go back to doing what they want to do with life but God says what I'm getting ready to do in your life I've got to be sure that once you get it you will not neglect the guidance because if you don't get the proper guidance after you get the miracle then you'll end right back up where you started from the first touch wasn't about restoration it was to see if you would be resistant to guidance because life has a way of breaking down all of your internal pride and your your need to control everything and to run your own life now you must remember that even though this man was blind he could still walk and so Jesus initiates a process that the man had to participate in if it was going to work and be effective the question is can you walk with Jesus even when you can't see him. Oh, that, that's somebody I'm preaching to right now that the problem is you, you hadn't started walking because you can't see him and, and you don't have a real strong sense of him being there. So you have decided that rather than fall on my face, I'll just stay where I am in place. But I want to tell you that you got to get up and start walking and start moving at the will of God. Even though you can't see him, you have to know that this is part of the process. And Jesus understood that because if I 
I didn't relocate this man, if I don't relocate you, then you will revert back to the familiar ways and you'll start repeating the same cycles and become further dependent on the level of comfort your comfort zone gives you and you would delay your deliverance. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go and notice now that Jesus gets the man out of the city and the Bible says that he spits in the man's eyes. It's absolutely unconventional. It's absolutely unexpected. But I want to pronounce over you now and everything that's connected to you that there is a miracle that is about to occur that is unconventional and unexpected. Can't you see everybody standing around shocked at the actions of Jesus? Can't you see from the people in the crowd that, that they're saying that this man is already blind. Now you bring him all the way out here just to spit on it. Now to further complicate matters, what you must understand is that when Jesus gets ready to spit on this man's eye, he couldn't see it. He couldn't brace himself. He could not prepare for it. Jesus stands in front of him and just spits in his eye. I want to give you a reason to shout for another two or three minutes right now because I want to tell you, get ready for a miracle that you're not even going to see coming. Oh God. That, that God's about to do something that he's not going to prep you for. He's not going to give you time to brace yourself for. You're getting ready to be the recipient of an overwhelming blessing and a miracle that you did not even see coming. The Bible says that he spit on the man's eyes um, can you imagine him spitting on the man's eye ladies and gentlemen the problem with this is, is that sometimes God takes you where he takes you and does things that are unconventional because he wants to know can you be spat on and still be committed to the process I've seen your vision come to pass, Lord. I'm preaching to people now who knows that if you're going after something, people are going to ridicule you. They're going to criticize you. They're going to spit on you. They're going to scandalize your name. But you can't let any of that stop you from being in pursuit of what God has for your life. He spits on the man and asks the man a crazy question. He says, do you see anything? You mean now you want to interview me and interrogate me after you sped on me and taken me through this unfamiliar process? Ladies and gentlemen, you have to be careful that you don't allow the processing that you are going through now to make you bitter because you don't understand that God is setting you up for greater vision. You have to have the ability to see beyond the process in order to see the progress that you are making. Notice the Bible says that when he looks up, he says to the man, do you see anything? The man says, sir, I see men as trees walking. Now I would have you to notice something that caught me off guard. Because I thought to myself, this is Jesus, the all-powerful, all-knowing, miracle-working God. Why would he lay hands on the man and then have to ask him if he saw anything? What we are looking at, ladies and gentlemen, is the only recorded uh, in the gospel, the progressive miracle. In other words, everywhere else, God would lay hands on people and immediately things would change. But in this instance, he lays hands on this man and his sight doesn't change. But his sense of depending on God does. He says, I see men as trees walking, which means that your perception of people is off. Some of you are looking at people and taking them at face value. Your perception is off. You're not, alert. You're not allowing yourself and your spirit to discern their motive and what their underlying agenda is. And you keep looking at people because they're smiling at you. When, but the truth is, if you had a greater sense of discernment, you would see their true intentions on the outside of you. And the Bible says that when the man looks up, he sees men walking 
as trees. I want to tell you that your current focal point is way beneath you. You have to look up. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I got to look up. I got to look up. Notice, if you will, the Bible says that he touches the man again and makes him look up. Now, this is for my real deep spiritual people who said that God won't make you do anything. Well, I think I need to remind you, he told David, David said that he makes me to lie down in green pastures life can hit you so hard that your your instinct is to drop your head and never look up again never look forward never look forward to anything but the bible says that when this man is looking down that jesus lifts him up and makes him look up oh god i want to prophesy over your life and tell you that god's gonna get ready to give you a reason to make you look up again and smile over the next three days god help me here i know you've been disappointed and disappointment has a way of messing with your mind and saying the last time i looked up and could totally see and couldn't see anything it set me back it messed my faith up it messed with my level of expectation but jesus puts his hand on his eyes again and makes him look up and the Bible says that he was restored and saw every man clearly ladies and gentlemen I want to tell you that what you need in this juncture in your life is not more cars and not more cash and not more clothes what you need is clarity shout back at me I need clarity I've got to have the ability to differentiate between who's with me and who's against me. Who I need to be around and who I need to shun. I need clarity at this season of my life. And the Lord sent me to talk to somebody who's been trying to focus your vision. And trying to align your sight in this season. The Lord told me to talk to somebody that's made up their mind. That in spite of what it's been feeling like. I'm still trying to see something. Oh, God. Uh, uh, look at your neighbor next to you on your sofa. Tell him, don't mind me. I'm trying to see something. I'm, I'm trying to see something that I've never seen before. I'm trying to see life on a larger scale. I'm trying to see life in a more elevated posture. And the Lord sent me to talk to somebody and tell you, don't worry about the spectators and the onlookers. You got to say, don't mind me. I'm just trying to see something. Lord, help me preach to somebody now. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, I'm trying to see something now. I, I'm trying to get rid of, rid of every hindrance, every barrier, every blockade that's trying to prohibit my ability to have sharper discernment and a pure perception for the thing that's coming next. And the Lord wanted me to talk to you on this day and tell you got to dismiss everybody that is contributing to the distortion of a clearer vision God you gotta say God I'm ready for clarity I'm ready to see like I have never seen before in my life and tell them around you tell them I'm just trying to see something God uh, if you don't want to see anything get out of my way you got to get out of my line of sight because I'm trying to see six figures before the end of this year I'm I'm trying to see something I'm trying I'm trying to see God elevate every arena of my existence I'm trying to see something I gotta I gotta move some doubt out of the way I gotta move some negativity that's trying to impose its will on my forward progress lay your hands on yourself and say I'm trying to see something that's why that that's why I'm dancing with no music that's why I don't need anybody else to around me for me to shout because I'm just trying to see something lay your hands on somebody next to you in your house and tell them don't mind me I'm trying to see something I'm trying to see that if I would focus on what's before me if I would focus on what's before me and not what's beneath me if I could focus on what's beyond me God is getting ready to unveil something spectacular something of a mind-blowing nature is getting ready to overtake every area of my life but I made up my mind I'm trying to see something God uh, uh, lay your hands on yourself and say I'm trying to see something I, I 
I've been blinded by life. I've been blinded by other people telling me that I'll never see what I've been destined to see. But I want to talk to somebody that's trying to see something today. That says that if I believe God, that if I if I keep my focus, if I if I don't lose my faith, God is about to show me what I've never seen before in my life. Lay your hands on yourself and say, I'm just trying to see something. I, I'm trying to see that if I serve God the way God wants me to serve him, that, that I'm getting ready to see greater doors open for me. I'm, I'm trying to see larger arenas. I'm trying to see greater influence break out in every area of my life. But the Lord sent me to talk to somebody that, that says, I don't need your applause anymore. But I'm not living beneath the between your hand claps of me I, I'm not looking for your approval or pre-approval but all I'm trying to see is that God is, a, is about to show me something to, I want to prophesy to somebody and tell you get ready to see astronomical numbers in the page of the order of sign on your checks get ready get ready get ready to see something that you have never seen before and the Lord wanted me to talk to somebody and said don't mind me in this season I'm not looking for more friends I got enough I'm not looking for more fans I got enough but don't mind me I'm just trying to see something Lord if you walked around in a maze like I have as long as I did if you walked around wondering were you good enough do you have enough of what it takes you wouldn't be looking for any other person you say I'm looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my favor somebody throw your head back and say I gotta see it I gotta see it I cried too long not to see it I studied too long not to see the manifestation I trusted God when I had no external evidence I believed God when there was nothing tangible for me to hold on to and you think I'm going to sit here dead and sophisticated the more I shout the more I see Lord you missed a place to dance right there prophesy to yourself and say the more I shout the more I see the more I open up my mouth, the more manifestation takes over my life. But the Lord sent me here to talk to you that was struggling to see it. It was straining your eyes. You were squinting to see it. You were straining your eyes to see if what you're seeing could be a reality for you. But I want to tell you about a God that told me to pronounce to you that eyes have not even seen. That even have not even heard uh, that it ain't even entered to the heart of man the things that God uh, is about to do in your life uh, go ahead and praise him like you love him like you love him oh God stretch your hands toward me because I got to pray for you now I know they're spectating and you don't owe them a whole lot of explanation either all you got to say is hey don't mind me I'm just trying to see something that's all I'm trying to see every single thing God declared concerning me. I'm praying for every person who's experiencing the declining and the distortion of vision. Things look a little blurry. And you're squinting, you're, you're straining your vision. Because a thing that's in my line of sight seems like it's further away than I can grasp. But I want to talk to you and tell you, you're getting ready to see something. Let me say to you, this is getting ready to be the biggest something you have seen to date. This is going to change the whole trajectory of your life. Stretch your hands toward me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I decree now over every individual's life right now. I rebuke now every obstructing factor every distracting spirit that's trying to lure them away from the center of their objective father I thank you now every person who's unsure of what they're seeing 
every vision that has become a little less vivid than it once was it looks more abstract than definite I want to tell you that God is opening that site up again you're getting ready to see with a greater depth of definition a greater depth of clarity a greater depth of insight like you've never seen it before and I decree it to be so and it cannot be otherwise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ we pray amen and amen I need you to give God the best praise you got right now hallelujah Well, we are at the portion of the service where I like to call it our global giving worship experience, which means that we have people just like you by the hundreds, the thousands, uh, who join us literally from around the world, across the country, and tune in to this virtual worship experience. And so on this day, I want you to prepare, first of all, the Lord's tithe. We are a tithing church, a tithing ministry. You are connected to a place of blessing where when we practice the principles of the word of God, then the harvest follows it. So I need all of you who are watching to return the Lord's tithe. It's simply a tenth of everything that God has allowed to come into your hand. The giving means are right here at the bottom of the screen. Find the one that's most convenient and I want you to begin to sow. Now on this day, I'm going to challenge. I need at least 75 persons that would stand with me with the seed offering of at least $75. That's what I'm, that's what I'm led to ask you to do this day. There are 75 of you that are gonna stand on me and say, Pastor, I'm gonna stand with you this day and I'm gonna believe God for an amazing harvest based on my obedience. Your obedience is always the prerequisite for supernatural overflow. So if you're one of the ones that are going to do that $75 seed with me, I want you just to respond saying, I'm one of the ones. I want to pray a special prayer for you and your family. I want to connect with you at the point of your obedience, at the point of your sacrifice. So I need at least 75 of you that are going to do that with me on this day. And then I'm going to challenge at least 100 of you that are watching that would get a $50 seed offering right now. No hesitation, no delay, but upon hearing the word of God, the request from the prophet of God, you're going to just respond without delay. So I need you to do that on this day. Obey God. You can't go wrong with obeying God. Those of you who are sowing on that corporate seed level, that $42 level, I want you to get that, have that prepared. Those of you who are watching saying, Bishop, God knows if I had any one of those amounts, I would certainly do it, but I don't. But I want you to know that if you give what you have, God will honor it. Come before God with a gift, with an offering. And so I want you to take what you have and I want you to sow it by faith and watch how God prospers you. All the giving means again are right here at the bottom of the screen. Those of you who choose not to give electronically, uh, we have an option for you to mail it in. There's a mailing address right there at the bottom of the screen. Get a stamp, a money order, a check, an envelope and send it in. I'm going to pray over it and pronounce God's blessings over it. And we're going to see the harvest like never before. Keep on giving. Watch how heaven responds to your seed. Family, didn't we enjoy the presence of God on today? I know service was just amazing. I know you felt the presence of the Lord right there, wherever you're watching us from. Right now, it's giving time, and we want to make sure that we sow into the man of God's life. He's delivered a powerful word to uplift us and teach us and to encourage us and strengthen our faith. And now is your opportunity to participate in sowing and seed into the man of God's life. So easy to do. You can go to his personal cash app at dollar sign Henry W. Bolden 3. Yeah, that's right, dollar sign Henry W. Bolden 3. Or you can go to his personal website at henrybolden.com. Go ahead, sow a good seed into the man of God's life. God bless you. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters. Listen, there is no greater invitation I can extend to you than that of inviting you to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. Uh, if I invited you to the White House, that would be meaningless. If I invited you to my house, that would pale in comparison. The greatest invite I can give you is to receive Jesus Christ this day. Will you do it this day? That is the question. After hearing the word of God, after being challenged and stirred in your faith, will you make the decision this day for Jesus Christ? Simple process, 
Um, all you got to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And according to the scriptures, you are in fact saved. That's you today. I want, you know, I'm praying for you. We've got hundreds of people that are now who are rooting for you, who are cheering for you. Uh, as you walk into this new life on this day, this day is a day of salvation for you. Who knew that you'd wake up today and make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life? Backslider, you got nothing to, uh, to go back to. The rest of your life really is the best of your life. Are you watching and say, man of God, I need a church home. I need a place, a ministry to be committed and connected to. And uh, if the Lord has led you to this place, you may say, I've been watching week after week in, week in and week out. And today God has spoken. Today I'm going to make that commitment. There's an email address right here at the bottom of the screen. All you need to do is send me your contact information. And I've got staff on standby now ready to help facilitate this decision you have made on this day. Jesus still is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And as you are committing to him, yourself to him this day, you're going to see and testify that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to you. Watch what God does with your life. Well, as always, time always flies way too quickly. It is my prayer that you have been blessed, that God has spoken to your heart. I pray that you've heard some concepts, some insight, uh, some principles some nugget of truth that you can hold on to that's going to help you get through this week and uh, help cause your faith to expand and help cause you to love God even at a greater level. Listen, do not forget to stay connected to us. There is a blessing in connection. Make sure you're following on all of the social media platforms. Make sure you have not forgotten to hit that share button because that's very important. You can hit it now. People will watch the replay later because of you. And I want you to know God faces toward you and he is smiling on you, your family, your business, everything that has to do with you. If you ever wanted to know was anybody in your faith corner, don't question it another day. I'm right here in your faith corner. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your praise reports. I want to hear your prayer requests. Go to henrybolden.com and send them to me. And uh, I just want to stand in faith and agreement with you that God is far from through with you. Well, I've got to go for now, but as always in parting, always remember that things can change for you at any moment. I'll see you next time. Hello, family and friends. I am Alden Shelton, and I just stopped by to invite you to be a part of this month's exciting celebrations. We want you to help us to celebrate our amazing man of God, our pastor, our bishop, Bishop R.C. Blakes Jr. His official day is July 14th, but we have a few days that you can be a part of. If you are in the Houston area, make plans to meet Bishop at 4805 Shumai Road at 11 a.m. this Sunday, July 11. If you are in the New Orleans area, make plans to meet us on July 17th at 11 a.m. at 1616 Robert C. Blake Senior Drive at our Uptown campus. And on July 18th at 9 a.m. at 13800 Hain Boulevard, our East New Orleans campus. For our virtual and global family, we want you to be a part as well. Be sure to send your birthday greetings on his social media pages on July 14th. Our committee is asking everyone to bless him with $57 or $157 love gift. I know he means so much more to you. You can use the digital methods of giving that are on the screen. Let's make this birthday extra special for our bishop, for our pastor, for our man of God. May God bless you all.